Hey everybody, welcome back to Tip of the Week. In this week's video, I wanna go over a couple different ways that you can mask more effectively using On One Photo Raw, and then I wanna give you guys a little bit more information on what each of the masking tools does, so the next time that you're masking, you have a better idea of how you're gonna do it and what each of the tools does when you click on them. So to get started, let's actually add a filter, and let's add the blur filter, and you'll notice that it blurs the entire photo. So if you want it only on specific parts of that photo, you could either grab your masking brush by heading over to your masking brush, and then you could brush that blur out to those areas that you please. Or you could use this masking bug here, and you could set a gradient, and you could try to do that to create your mask. Or there's a couple different ways that you can create a mask using different filters and local adjustments. So let's just reset this. So the first tip I wanna give you guys is to try luminosity masks. So to create a luminosity mask, it's, in it's incredibly easy. All you have to do is head over to your masking options here, go in there, and then just head down and click Lumen. This will create a mask based on the brighter and darker areas of your photo. So you'll notice that I have this nice bright blue background for the sky, and then I have sort of these darker palm trees. Well, if I view my mask, you'll notice that those are in black and the rest is sort of in white or gray. Well, the white and gray areas are the areas that are revealing the mask, and the blacker, darker areas in my shot are the areas that are concealing the mask. And if you want to refine the mask, you could do that easily just by heading down to your level slider here. and you can kind of refine how you want that mask to be applied. I know it's not perfect, I'm just kind of trying to give you guys a nice idea of how to use the luminosity mask. So that's an easy way to create a mask using just simply large tonal areas in your background and foreground. So let's just take this one off and let's add a new filter onto our photo. And let's just add a nice texture. And let's actually add a nice, let's add, is that a dramatic texture for our photo? There we go. So now if we just wanna create a mask for a large tonal area such as the sky here, we can do that easily by using a color range mask. So if we head into our masking options here, we head down to color range, we can click this and we can grab this little dropper here and you can drop it on any color in your photo and it'll create a nice mask for that color range. See how it pulled that blue from that area? And now it's using that as a mask for my photo. Now if I view this mask here, it's using all of those blue areas to create the mask, and now all these darker areas that don't have that color are all concealed. So those are just a couple of ways that you can add masks using different filters and local adjustments. So now I wanna give you guys a little bit more information on what each of the masking tools does. So to give you guys a better idea of what each of these masking tools does here, I actually just added a nice texture onto my photo and I added a part of it so that we could use this cloud part for our sky here and try to remove all of this from the foreground. Just a reminder, this isn't going to be a perfect mask or blend. I just really wanna give you guys a better idea of what each of the masking tools does. So to get rid of the texture from our foreground here and leave it on top of the sky, the first thing I'm going to do is make sure I have my masking brush selected and I'm going to go up to my perfect brush and select that as well. And the perfect brush is basically going to differentiate between different tonal ranges and mask out accordingly. So I'm just going to brush out my mask here. There we go. And it's a little sloppy right there, but that's just for demonstration purposes. I'll show you what I'm doing with that in just a second. So to give you guys a little bit more info about what these tools do for your masking, if you wanna enhance or refine your mask, simply head on over to these tools here. And the first tool I wanna show you guys is the refine brush. And the refine brush is great for, you know, sharp areas that you need to refine around a mask, such as these trees on the top here, or hair, or branches, or leaves, or anything of that where you really need to get in there and it's hard to separate the different tones from the mask. So if we zoom in here, 
what the refine brush is going to do is it's just going to separate the different tonal ranges from the areas on the edge of your mask. So you'll notice that it took these sharp areas up top where the trees are on top of the mountain here and separated it from the tonal areas in the sky. So this is great for brushing on masks when it comes to hair or if you have trees and you're trying to replace a sky. The refine brush is sort of the go-to tool for those types of masking. So I'm actually just going to go down and I'm actually going to invert my mask. And what I wanna show you guys now is the chisel tool. And the chisel tool is basically a tool that's going to chisel down the edge of your mask so that you can remove any fringes or little things that are not looking natural or you just wanna get rid of. So if you wanna grab the chisel tool, just grab this little masking tool here with the chisel on it, click it, and to demonstrate what I'm talking about, if you just brush over your mask, you'll notice that it's just chiseling off a little edge at a time of the mask. That's because it's called the chisel tool. So if you had maybe, you know, a little bit of fringe hanging over a rock or you're trying to replace a sky and the cliff has a little bit of the mask over it, you could use this chisel tool to really refine the mask and make it even more natural. Another great way to use the chisel tool is to simply double click it. So if I zoom out here and I double click the chisel tool, you'll see that the more times I click it, it'll take off the fringes for the entire mask. So if you double click the chisel tool, it's going to do the same thing that if you brushed around it, but it's going to apply it to the entire mask all at once. So if I double click it again, you'll notice that it's chiseling off a little bit of the edge click by click so that it refines the mask even more. So those are a few tips on how you can create different masks using On One Photo Raw and a little bit more information on what the masking tools do for the masks. Thanks so much for watching Tip of the Week. I'm Dylan with On One and stay tuned for more.